Hello, this is Alan Brooks, and welcome to another Mandela Effect video. Today I'm just going to go right into it, not explain anything. You guys know what the Mandela Effect actually is, so I just want to go into some of the new proofs I've found, and they're absolutely stunning. One of them I just found was this guy has a portal in his bedroom. And when he's in his hallway of his house, uh, the Bible reads one way, and the Berenstein Burns Bears reads the way it's been changed through technology, modern technology, which I'm going to get into in just a second. It reads, uh, the Bible reads in Isaiah 11, 6, the lion will lay down, the wolf will lie down with the uh, lamb. And the Berenstein Bears are the Berenstein Bears. Here's pictures of what I'm talking about right there. But when he goes into his room where there's a portal into this alternate dimension and alternate reality, something changes. I mean, it's right before your eyes. The Baron Steen Bear, the Baron Stain Bears, becomes the Steen Baron Steen Bears, which you know, 99% of the people in the world remember them growing up as the Baron Steen Bears, and I believe that's one of the secret messages that the enemy's doing with all this. He's changing the Steen, the Jewish people, to the Stain. He, they, the devil disdains the Jews, and they become the Stain on the earth, and he wants to wipe them out which is what the Antichrist is predicted to do, to march across the Middle East and wipe out Israel, pretty much. Okay, so, and then he also goes into his room, and the Bible in the hallway reads, the lion will lie with the lamb, and he puts it on the bed, and it changes to the wolf, I mean, I'm sorry, it reads, the wolf will lie with the lamb out in the hallway, and then he puts it on the bed, it changes to the lion. And unless this guy is some sort of incredible, uh, you know, you know, video, uh, making up videos, or, you know, did this by some sort of trickery, I don't see it. It looks pretty real to me, people, and this this is proof positive of exactly what we've been talking about, that something, there's parallel universes, and they're being opened up by a technology, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. It's right here, right before your eyes. I mean, it couldn't be more real. It's not It's not out there like, you know, oh, I remember the Bible saying this, and I remember Berenstein Bears. That's what we do remember, but here is proof positive. It's crazy. Uh, one thing I want to get into is what's behind all this? Who's behind it? Well, you know, CERN is a super collider in Switzerland underground. A lot of people feel it's not just a secret atom-smashing experiment, but it's instead has a secret purpose, a sinister purpose, to open up portals into other universes, to open up doorways. And along those lines, its, uh, its logo has 666 in it. Now, why on earth would uh, a scientific up-and-up experiment have 666 in it? That doesn't make any sense. 666, for all of you who don't know, is the mark of the beast or the devil at the end of time. The Antichrist will be known by 666. So we see in CERN, it has that as logo. It also has uh, on its grounds the goddess of destruction and Shiva, uh, the Hindu god, and it's going through a portal. Why? Why uh, these enlightened scientists... Why would they have two religious objects on their grounds unless they had a sinister purpose, which might be to bring about the Antichrist, who is known by 666, into our world? And just a quick aside, uh, CERN is built on the ancient city of Apollyon, uh, the grounds of it, the ruins of it, where the Bible says in Revelation 9, uh, an angel called Apollyon will open up a doorway to hell. Now, gee, people, what are the odds of that? And that's exactly what this could be, that they're, op you know, that they're going to open up a doorway for evil aliens to come in. If you look at this picture, it, it's a CERN stream, matter stream picture, and it has pictures of lots of alien and evil faces, which, you know, to me makes sense. If you're opening up a doorway to hell, you're going to see some hellish faces. And the more you look at this, you're going to see them. So I want you to look. So this is in the CERN matter stream. It's a fact. So they want to open up a portal to hell to bring about their ultimate goal to have the devil and the Antichrist rule this world. So that's just a quick precursor. And now we're going to get into the Mandela Effect proofs. Okay, people? You know, what I've seen is there's a lot of cool uh, videos on YouTube. One of them, this guy in his apartment in one room, he takes a picture outside his window and there's a white car in the parking lot. He goes to the bedroom next door and the car's gone. 
He goes back to the bed to the other room. The car's there again. And then he goes back to the bedroom the next next door and it's gone. So apparently what the CERN and other uh, you know, technology, perhaps the D-Waves computers are doing, they're opening up portals all over the world between us and parallel universes where we see things. And we also see this with cars on these videos. A car will hit and make a crash where a car came out of nowhere. Before there was nothing there and all of a sudden a car is there and hits people. So, you know, this guy has a stunning video. He has his NIV Bible in his hand in the hallway and it reads Isaiah 11:6. You know, the wolf will lie down with a lamb. And that's the way it is. It's been changed for all time, people. It used to be the lion will lie down with the lamb. But, you know, all the experts and huffy, huffy people say, it's just misremembering you guys. You don't remember right. You're, you guys are dumb. Well, here this guy walks into his room and instantly the Bible changes and it's right there printed up. The lion will, I mean, the lion will lie down with a lamb, Isaiah eleven six. You know, there's just so many examples of residual evidence like this. This is actually a portal opened up. And look at this. This is a real Bible, people. Yeah, it isn't NIV, but it's still a real Bible. Unless this guy went to some huge length to print up a Bible with a fake page in it to fool us all, it's pretty impressive. Now, the same guy has the Berenstein Bears book. In the hallway, it reads the way it should. Berenstein. But... It's been changed. In our reality, it's now Baron Stain. And when he walks into his room, it says Stain. And I think the secret message there is the Jews are a stain upon the world. And that's what the devil thinks of them. He hates them. I love the Jews, but they are a stain. And that's why he changed it to the stain as a secret message as part of the Mandela effect. And that's really an amazing thing. He walks out of the room. It says Baron Stain. He walks into the room. It says the way it should be, according to the reality that I remember, Baron Steen. Now that's pretty crazy. Another one of the scriptures that I've seen that I have proof right now that he's the, that the enemy has changed is uh, judge not lest you be judged. It's different now. And you see here's the way it should be. And it's been changed to this different wording. Another thing that's been changed is the Lord's Prayer. It says now, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It should say, Who art in heaven and on earth. And then the next verse talks about debtors. You all know that one, but it's been changed. It used to be trespasses. Now there's something to do with trespasses, but it's outside the main body of the prayer. It reads completely differently. So somebody's changed the New King James Version. This is not just a change that somebody made along the timeline. It's been changed from the beginning. So this is pretty crazy. And I want to go over now some old earth geography, you know, against all, you know, insanity. You know, you this is uh, they've changed our geography. You know, they not only have they changed famous movie scenes like Luke, I am your father is now no, I am your father. And Field of Dreams is, you know, if you build it. He will come and not they will come, you know, so they've changed our geography somehow. And I want to give some cool examples of that. You know, I have a photographic memory pretty much. I remember South America being under North America and being, well, South America. And, you know, basically Brazil, the, uh, the eastern half of Brazil lined up with the eastern half of New York City in those areas up there. But now it's moved 1,200 miles to the right. And Central America is going almost east-west mostly. And now even the Panama Canal used to be built east-west. Now it's built north-south. So here's one cool, what they call residual evidence. In a church, a Trinity Church in Lubbock, Texas, in a video, it has a picture on the wall of the world map. And it's pretty much, it's a little blurry, but it's the way I remember it. North America is under South America. Uh, Australia is way down under. That's why it's called Down Under. Right now, it's not Down Under anymore. It's up close, almost touching the islands, these huge islands up above it. And it's more, it's almost above Madagascar, which, you know, used to be named Angry at Automobile, but they changed it during the Mandela Effect to Mad at Gas Car. Angry at your automobile, get it? Anyway, now it's way, it, the way I remember it, it was way below Madagascar, and that's the way 
it uh, this map portrays it. And here's another map that portrays it that way too. Australia is down under. Another one of the Mandela effect changes is the um, Mediterranean Sea and the Rock of Gibraltar. Currently, the Rock of Gibraltar almost touches Africa. And Italy is almost touching the island of Sicily. But my memory is that it was much further away from that. And here's several maps that show those two aspects. You know, why would I remember that? And why would these maps be off? Some of them are cartoons. Here's one from a Superman cartoon that shows the Australia part. And it shows the Mediterranean Sea part, I believe, and North and South America. There's a Simpson cartoon that says North and South America. Here's a world map watercolor that somebody drew that's on the internet that has the world map the way I remember it. North America above South America and Australia in the right place. And there's also this huge larger opening between the Rock of Gibraltar and uh, Africa. And so here's several other photographs. You know, here's one the guy found this green map on, in a thrift store in Seattle that has North America above South America and Central America going north-south. And so that's the way I remember it. What do you guys remember? So this is, this is just a few more examples. Another one is an Eisenhower silver dollar. It was coined and minted in the 50s, and it has North and South America the way they should be. Now, were those people too stupid to make a map that they would print a coin that would be totally off by 1,200 miles? No, people, they wouldn't. It, they, something's changed our geography. Something's changed our history. And they're changing our Bibles, which I believe is the main point. You know, the Bible talks about a great delusion, the Antichrist fooling everybody at the end of time. You know, and we thought, well, we're not going to be fooled by anything. But yes, they're fooling us with this. If they're retroactively changing our Bibles, I mean, we could make up, wake up tomorrow and the whole New Testament's changed. Where Jesus, you know, he didn't die on the cross. You know, he, maybe he died and he, he, uh, you know, he, he didn't come back to life. I mean, they could do anything at this point. They've been testing it with small changes up to this point. But, you know, they could do anything. They've changed the Lord's Prayer. They've changed so many things. They've changed judge not lest ye be judged. It's been changed, people, but the main one everybody remembers is Isaiah 11.6. It's a picture of his Bible, people. And, you know, I have, a, I have a video with John Hagee saying the lion and the lamb. I have a book written by an MIT professor where he says Isaiah 11.6, the lion and the lamb. So, you know, they're changing our scriptures because the Bible talks about the Antichrist in uh, Daniel 7.25. He'll change the times and the laws. And there'll be a great delusion, Paul said in Second Thessalonians. So that means it won't be easy. I think it's going to have to do with aliens somehow, that they're going to pretend to be the real gods, the star gods, as Amos 5 says, and they're going to try and fool the world into worshiping them and become our masters. They've been working at this for a long time. And so anyway, this is the plan of the Mandela effect, is to fool the world into rejecting the real God, the real Bible, and accepting a new Bible that's been watered down. This is Alan Brooks signing off.